All right. Well, thank you for uh, attending our session today on employment opportunities with a graduate degree. Uh, my name is Amanda Ostrico, and I'm the Assistant Vice Provost and Director of Graduate Enrollment Management here at the University of Kansas. And I am happy to introduce our two speakers for today's session. Uh, so our speakers are Nicole Reese from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and Wendy Shoemaker from our University Career Center. So I will turn it over to Nicole and Wendy need to get started. Great. Thanks, Amanda. So as Amanda said, I'm Nicole Reese. I'm the program manager for graduate student professional development communications in the College Office of Graduate Affairs, which serves the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. So everything kind of from STEM, molecular biology, through the social sciences, and humanities and arts. And my colleague, Wendy. Yes, hello, everyone. I'm Wendy Shoemaker. I'm the director of the University Career Center. And, and we um, uh, belong to the academic success. And so what we do is, uh, is help uh, KU students uh, find purpose and employment and direction uh, during their experiences and, and after they graduate. So delighted to be with you here today. <laughs> so, you know, KU graduate alumni, they work in all the sectors, they work all over the world. So we have KU graduate students working in government nonprofit sectors, for-profit sectors, in the academy, both as professors, but also in higher education administration, like I do and as Amanda does. Um, we have a number of profiles. So we have a KU alumni spotlight page, so you can see where our alumni are working, kind of how they got there advice that they have for graduate students. So we have folks working at Cerner and we have folks working at Vanderbilt for, you know, DEI support. And we have folks working in the, the Holocaust Center and the Library of Congress. So it's a great place to kind of see where people are taking their graduate degrees in all different types of directions and all different types of spaces. Um, this is kind of our college collection. Uh, a lot of programs also have their own listing of alumni and showing you like where they are, where they're their first job was, where their current job is, um, and those are usually listed on their website under the alumni section. So feel free to check those out as well to kind of see where alumni from specific programs are going, as well as just kind of students in the college and where they went after their degrees. What we do, so what I do specifically is I help graduate students explore career opportunities, mostly outside of the academy, so academic adjacent careers like mine, but, um, but careers in federal service, state service, for-profit industries, nonprofit industries, kind of anything that's a non-faculty career is kind of the support that I provide. We do that in a number of ways. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a couple of different ways that we, um, that we use often, especially for career exploration and planning. The first one is Imagine PhD, and it's called Imagine PhD, but it's actually also really useful for master's students as well. Uh, it was just kind of developed with PhDs in mind because there wasn't a tool for PhD students going into non-academic careers. But we've seen a lot of um, master's level students use these as well and prospective students to kind of get an idea of like what career paths are open to them. So this specific tool is a career exploration tool specifically for graduate students in the humanities and social sciences, though we have seen a number of students in STEM and the arts use this as well. It utilizes a number of assessment tools. So assessing your skills, your interests and your values to see what kind of job families would be a best fit for you based on those kind of responses. And it helps you see four different job like families that might be a good fit for you based on kind of the, the results of your assessment. They're not prescriptive tools. It's not going to tell you that you're a firefighter. It's not going to tell you that you should be this thing and not that thing. It's just going to tell you kind of like based on the results of your assessment, what careers you're going to be most satisfied with long term. Uh, the tool includes resources for exploring the job families more fully, where these jobs are, what job titles look like, preparing your job application materials. So a CV or a resume or a cover letter that's going to be tailored to a job posting, and a number of templates to help you prepare and apply for jobs. Um, this is kind of a screenshot once you get into the tool to kind of see all of the different job families that are open to, that are, you can explore in the tool itself. So there's three assessments, like I said, there's the skills assessment to kind of see, you know, quantitative, qualitative communication skills, technical skills, leadership and professional skills, um, interests, and then values. And when you're a grad student, I usually have students take this every year because it's a really nice way to see how these things change over time as you get farther into your graduate career, as you develop uh, skills through your coursework and your experience as a graduate student, how your interests might change throughout your graduate student process, and maybe most importantly, how your values change from when you come in as a graduate student and until you leave because values 
are kind of the cornerstone of a, of a meaningful career. You could have a career that's a really good fit for you and your skills and your interests. But if that specific organization or that specific job doesn't match up with your values, um, you're gonna be kind of unsatisfied long-term. So it's a really important component of career exploration. Um, the job families in the Imagine PhD include everything from advocacy to communications, public relations and marketing, diplomacy and mediation, human services, organizational management, research and analysis, faculty, both research intensive and teaching intensive. So even though it's kind of focused on non-faculty careers, there is a faculty component in there because we know a lot of master's and PhD students are still interested in going into the academy. And within each job family, like I said, there are resources for kind of exploring that job family, um, connecting with folks in that field to do informational interviews and learn more about it, um, tailoring your job application materials and finding where these jobs are and then applying for the jobs themselves. The kind of partner uh, career assessment tool to this for STEM is called My IDP Science Careers. So it's a very similar tool in that it helps you assess your skills, your interests, and your values, but it's for students in the natural sciences. So it's going to show you more career paths that are kind of a fit for that. So science education, again, it has um, 20 job areas and career paths, but they're very much STEM focused. Um, and much like Imagine PhD, it has resources and tools and templates to help you explore for jobs prepare for applying for those jobs and then applying for those jobs themselves. Uh, in both tools, there's also some IDP long-term skill and development planning tools in there to help you if you find skills or interests that are kind of a mismatch, but it's a job family that you're really interested in, addressing those skills gaps and, um, and working through those in graduate school so that you're better prepared for the job market when you, when you graduate. This is kind of what uh, my IDP looks like. So it's gonna show you your skills match and your interests match and your values match for a variety of careers, so everything from science education for non-sciences, uh, non-scientists, science policy, science writing, um, supportive science related products, all different kinds of things. So again, very similar to my uh, Imagine PhD, but just STEM focused. A key to getting ready to go on the job market is connecting with alumni and building your professional networks. And you really should start that as soon as possible because building your professional network is gonna be really important in understanding where careers are, getting a good feeling for like what that career looks like on the inside rather than what you think that career looks like, um, finding out where jobs are. So in the nonprofit sector, upwards of 70 to 80% of jobs aren't publicly listed. So the way that you find out about these jobs is being in touch with your professional network so they can send you the postings or let you know the job com is coming open or where the job board is or whatever. We have a really nice tool for this. It's called KU Mentoring. This is um, owned and kind of run by the KU Alumni Association. It's free for students. We have over 2000 alumni on the platform who are there to help you. They want to connect with you and help you find jobs, get advice, all that kind of stuff. Um, once you go into the tool, you can create your own profile. The nice thing is that you can see alumni. They cannot see, they cannot search for you. So you have some protection there. Um, but you can kind of see where all of our alumni are, what they're doing, how they got there. And the nice thing is when you want to connect with alumni, you can find them in terms of like what help topics they're comfortable talking about. So if you are wanting to go to grad school, they can help you, you know, give you advice on applying and navigating a graduate degree willing to do mock interviews or choosing a major. So this is Howard Graham. He, he's actually the person that runs uh, KU Mentoring over at the Mentoring, uh, the Mentoring Alumni Association. Um, so you can find them by the, the topics they're willing to help you with. You can, the, the tool is really nice in that it actually helps you connect with folks and gives you kind of a template so you don't have to write the email in yourself. Um, you can just kind of go in and edit it. And you can kind of get a feel for, you know, who Howard is before you connect with him. The nice thing about the tool itself is you can filter alumni in a number of ways. There's tons of filters, so you can really find the people you're looking to connect with and get advice from. So you can filter by degree type. So PhD, master's, um, master's of education, ed D, pretty much any degree in the college or the university program or department, the current industry that they're working in. So if you're really interested in working for the federal government, you can find those folks, the location. So if you're really interested in moving out to New York City, finding the alumni that are working and living out there, affinity groups that they um, belong to so that you can connect and be like, you know, I was in KU Environs. Uh, I'd love to meet more folks that were in KU Environs. And then additional affiliations, military, Greek life clubs, professional associations that they were a part of while they were here. And you can also join groups. So there's some groups that have developed into the tool. 
So if you're really interested in healthcare, you can join the Jayhawks and healthcare group and see where all the all the different alumni are working in the healthcare industry. We have a KU Black Alumni Network, we have a Sports Management Professional Society, Women and Engineers Network, the Latinx and Hispanic KU community, and there's more kind of groups popping up every day. So that's just part, you know, a partial list of the groups that we have. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Wendy. Oh, Wendy, I think you're still muted. Thank you. Uh, I'll share my screen. All right, so great introduction. So let me just shift focus just a tiny bit and, and talk a, a little bit about uh, employment and the value of education. And one of the reasons why you're probably attending this is that by now you figured out that a graduate education uh, leads to greater opportunities and, and the numbers don't lie. And this is a, a recent uh, survey from the Department of Labor um, uh, and uh, US Bureau of Labor Statistics showing how uh, education leads to um, greater earnings over time. And you know, recently we've come through uh, a recession and you can see how uh, the unemployment rate and um, the, uh, is uh, lower for those with more education. So that's the, the end result is that, you know, what we understand about education, the more education you have, the more resilient you are in uh, down economies and uh, the more, um, you know, uh, in income you will earn through time uh, as a result of your degree. So let's examine why that is, uh, you know, the, it, let's get some insight on how to maximize those benefits of education. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously because, because of the development of new skills and, and, and especially employable skills. And these are complex skills that employers are looking for. As I review position descriptions that require uh, graduate level work and beyond, it's, it, these are complex skills, working with data. It's not just understanding data, but being able to manipulate data. If it's something involving humans, it's, it's complex problem solving. It's really down to the complexity of the skills. And you know, graduate school and those programs are uh, helping you build those skills through experiences in the classroom, outside the classrooms, um, with your uh, doing your research. And so really the, the key here is being able to articulate the value of those experiences to employers. But that's what you know, graduate students uh, have in abundance is, is a real array of those experiences. But the other benefit of this is an expanded network. You know, uh, so right now you have a network. It's it's a network that you've developed through time, and through your own linkages, through your own undergraduate programs, uh, through your own networks, friends and family. But with uh, you know, a, perhaps a new school, a new program, you're going to have greater exposure to uh, more people. Frankly, it's just it's, it could be a numbers game, but it's also a different network. And you know, the research shows on network. Um, there's there's people who study this. Is that it's, uh, you know, our, the strength of our network is based on the, you know, how complex they are. It's just like an ecosystem, if you think about it. Um, so if you have different networks in, from different walks of life and different uh, um, focal areas, the more flexible you're going to be and the more array, a wider array of people you have access to. Um, so there's this saying, uh, the strength of your weak ties. And so when, if you have lots of, you know, let's say you have three or four different distinct networks and if, uh, you know, these are connected through weak ties, that's really where your strength of your network is. And so you really want a complex network with lots of professionals and lots of different uh, people who are thinking differently than you. Um, and also, it's not so much that you're, it's your first order of network, it's, your, it's the second degree and your third degree. And those are, that's where the value of your network is going to be, is um, it's not so much the people you know directly, but it's their connections. And it's those connections, connections, and that's borne out through research and it, you know, it, it is getting access it is to a wider array of people. We know through uh, lots of uh, studies and just through anecdote uh, evidence uh, is that when we talk to people about successful job searches or career searches, 
it's they've done it through connecting with people. So Nicole has shared with you some resources, and I'm going to show you one more um, about how to to leverage that. But it's really around uh, help getting people to, to to help you and you helping that. It's around your personal connections. And so at graduate school is really around uh, connecting with people, developing skills, expanding your network. But then I think the most important thing is greater confidence and feeling good as you approach uh, your job search about, you know, um, managing ambiguity, um, you know, while producing results. If, if, if there's anything, if I could boil it down to what employers are looking for, it's that. Um, there's a lot of change right now in the labor economy. There's a lot of information coming in and they're really requiring of, of people they're hiring. Uh, and I see it in almost every job posting now is uh, adaptability and problem solving and leadership. These are the things that they're looking for that's almost universal. And so they really need people who can, can uh, hang out with that ambi ambiguity and while producing results. And what better place to be able to demonstrate that than graduate school? Because that's really the sum of your experiences is really managing ambiguity and producing results. You do that through your, your papers, your projects, your exams, uh, your collaborative projects. Um, and so you, when you leave your graduate program, you're gonna have all this, these results in abundance. So that's, what, that's really what's driving this adaptability and this employability of graduate students. It's not just based on your credential, it's really the value you bring to an employer. So let me show you, share with you some of the resources. I'll just share with you kind of some screenshots and then I'm gonna exit and then I'm gonna kind of wander around on uh, uh, our website and show you some specific things that we do to help students, um, graduate students, um, develop those skills in those networks. So the first is the University Career Center's website. Um, that's career.ku.edu. And uh, we host a lot of, we specifically host a lot of career events every year, over 30 uh, a year. And that's just the University Career Center. There are multiple career services offices, business engineering, journalism. Um, so there's even more when you, when you can't, figure in what they're doing too. So each of these uh, are networking events. And I would say almost all of the industries are gonna be represented if you think of us, uh, of what we're representing and what we're bringing. So these are opportunities to network, to connect, to talk about uh, internships, um, um, you know, full-time job opportunities, other opportunities, and just simply build your network. So these are these are fantastic. And I'll show you where to find those here in a minute. And then the other thing that I, a couple of things that I want to share with you is LinkedIn. I'm going to show you how to navigate this in a way that um, if you're kind of in that space where you kind of, you know what you want to study academically, uh, but you're not quite sure, or you have some, a couple ideas about career pathways, but are still open or, you know, still exploring, I'll show you how to get a little bit more information um, using your network. And, um, and I'll show you a few other uh, resources on our webpage. Um, so let me exit here and just kind of get into, so here's the uh, career.ku.edu. This is our website. And so uh, the events page uh, that I've mentioned is going to be right up here. And we, what we do is we organize these per, per semester. And this just gives you a sense of the depth and the breadth of the opportunities that we have per semester. So, you know, the Career and Internship Expo, over 150 employers came uh, representing pretty much every industry out there um, from, you know, business, nonprofit, public, a lot of government in there. And this is, uh, right now we're offering events virtually, uh, but we will, it's likely that we will continue uh, offering a piece of those uh, moving forward. Because what we've discovered uh, about virtual events is that we, uh, there's a lot more, um, a variety of uh, people who can attend an event like this, and it's much more convenient. So you can attend this uh, through the comfort of your own um, your your own room, your own apartment, your own uh, wherever you live. And then it's the same for the employers too. So we find employers who are, you know, from DC and, and Denver and, and Dallas are more likely to attend um, instead of, you know, having to travel in. So we'll probably continue to uh, offer a kind of a hybrid series of events, you know, in person, uh, which is more the traditional model of career events and then hybrid. Uh, but architecture work, it, beyond KU events are really cool in that these are paneled events and right now they're all also offered uh, by uh, 
YouTube or virtually. And we record these and record and we put them on this website. So these are great. And I invite you to make them available to uh, the public. And, um, and the purpose of the Beyond KU event is to, to focus in on one particular career pathway and then offer a variety of careers within that, if that makes sense. So here's digital influencers, working outside the classroom. We're trying to make these really accessible. And these are kind of entry level uh, opportunities. These are not, you know, opportunities for, or areas where, you know, you need 10 years of experience. And um, so we've tried to identify recent alums, people working in the field, and, and you will recognize yourself in these people. And you will notice that how adaptable they have become or have been in their um, in their search. Um, uh, many times their, their degree doesn't always match up with their career pathways, and you'll learn how they did that and how they navigated that. And so, so that's, those are just a few of our uh, career events that I just wanted to bring out. If you wanted to look at past events, you can look at those too, but just to kind of get a sense of what we, what we do. So navigating back to the career website, I'm going to show you a few other things. Um, career assessments, Nicole showed you a couple assessments, which are awesome. Imagine PhD and my, uh, the, my IDP program, but um, we also offer quite a few assessments with the Career Center. And so um, some of these are fee-based, but uh, uh, some of them are free. Uh, the one that's free is, uh, and it's really open uh, to the, just anyone to use it. I, as you can see there, I make it really obvious. Here's the password, it's Jayhawk. I really want to be able to use it. And uh, this is, it's called Focus. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I'm just navigating here. That'll ask you work interests, values assessment, uh, personality, skills, and leisures. It focuses one of the few tools out there that'll ask you what you like to do in your free time and uh, assess that and, and come back with some occupations. You can also combine the results of these right here. And so what would be, and so if you take all five of these assessments and you combine the results, you come down to like one or two and like, this is what we think are kind of matches for you for work interests. Uh, a match for values. Like Nicole said, this is what really is going to resonate for you, what's important to you, what's really, what's going to help you understand, it's going to help you really enjoy your, your work. Um, and uh, these are the things that in my experience as a career coach, you know, people cannot live without. Um, you, you might be able to work in a field that it's not as interesting, but you probably won't work in a field for very long if it's not in values alignment. Uh, personality, does this connect with you and how you like to show up in the work and how you like to do your work? Skills, um, these are skills that you have or should develop. So if you combine all those, and typically what happens, you, it'll come down to like a handful of careers. And, and then it'll uh, give you information on occupational information, uh, salary, demand, what is the job outlook. They also have information that links to uh, Bureau of Labor uh, statistics on is it a green job? Is it um, is it a hot job? You know, is it, is it, is it, I think they have a little fire. You know, it's on fire. So lots of people are um, you know hiring in this field, and that's always nice to know because you know when these jobs in demand, that means it's easier for you to to look for a job and secure employment in the area. You can also explore by job family. There is indication there about the level of education as well. So um, great tool that I always like to point out. So those are some, some basic things on the career.ku.edu. Uh, There's quite a bit on there for you to explore in terms of um, you know, career outcomes and employment opportunities. Um, but another tool that I'd like to point out, and obviously something you know about is LinkedIn, and you probably have a LinkedIn profile, but this is a kind of underused portion of LinkedIn, which is the alumni website. So if you're from KU, this is going to, you know, I'm going to just show you KUs because this is what we're talking about here. Um, and so what Nicole showed you was the mentor network, which is fantastic. And what I love about that network, and I use it all the time with students, is these are folks who have volunteered to be mentors. And so they're very approachable. They want to be approached by you. Um, great tool. But, you know, LinkedIn is uh, kind of like a, a wider network. Just think of it as a wider network. And these are folks who, uh, and the, I, the way I like to use this is as a career exploration tool, is if you were like, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this degree in, um, in education or counseling or molecular biology. You know, I, I have an idea, but I would like to know more. 
Um, so this is this is like my go-to tool. So you can see here, I've just clicked on this. Uh, you just simply just look for your university and just type it in. All of them have this format. So, you know, you could do this for any university, um, but alumni um, is, you know, to get the listing. And then you, um, you know, it's, you can search by where they live, where they work, what they do, what they studied and what they are skilled at. Okay, so if like you find that you want to, if you're particularly keen on using, um, you know, public speaking skills or Excel or uh, strategic planning, you can search on this. But what I want to show you is what shows up if, let's say, we do um, just something counseling like that. So I know I'm going to get a degree in counseling psychology. I'm probably going to do something in that area. And what it's done is it's screened all those profiles, those over 165,000 profiles, and it found anyone who mentioned counseling. And I love this as a tool because then I, now I understand uh, University of Kansas alumni um, are working um, you know, Kansas Health Systems, Wal what's that? Walgreens, what do you do for Walgreens? See, what does that mean? And so this is what I mean, it's like really expanding your, your insights of what, what, what the possibilities are. And there's, there's quite a bit out there and there's such a great degree of career versatility with the graduate degree. Um, you can also then uh, key in a uh, master's degree. You can search on another level uh, using a PhD. So if I do, let's see if I, I'm, let's see if I do, uh, this is right. Now it has to, it's not a perfect system. So it has to kind of correspond with what they have on their profile. So they may have it spelled differently. So it's kind of, it's a, um, you know, so if you wanted to find people with the graduate level work uh, in these specific fields. Now, this was almost a perfect match because between what I had searched on, because a lot of people in counseling have graduate degrees, you know, that's typically the case. Um, but you could do this with any kind of field. You could also just go uh, using kind of their broad uh, blocks of uh, information. If you want to just look at, if you just want to look at counseling psychology, just do it that way. Um, and but specifically, all this was to share with you, then it just it filters out um, those particular profiles that, um, you know, that satisfy those search criteria. So, and then you can basically do some research and, and find, uh, you know, look at their pathways. I use this all the time uh, with students to, you know, see career versatility, where people started, where they changed, how they morphed. Um, it's really kind of fun and um, it's to kind of spend spend a, an hour or two kind of hanging out here and, and uh, seeing what people have been up to. And it's a great exploration tool. Um, and it's a great insight for you uh, to think, you know, as you think through your options, you have lots of options uh, with a graduate degree. And that's the thing with the education, the more education, the more options you have, uh, which is probably the reason why you're attending this. So. Um, that's the end of our, our, I think, our formal presentation, as I understand. I think the next piece is for education. So I'll stop sharing my screen, and we'll just um, see what questions we have. And I'll go ahead and stop recording so that we can, you know, have a pretty informal, you know, Q&A session here. So let me stop recording, and then, yeah, certainly ask any questions that you all have.